Welcome to Treasured Island by way of Villa Heights Baptist Church. We are pleased that you are here with us this morning. Special welcome to those uh, viewing online. Stand with us as we sing this morning.
Good job, praise team and worship team. Thank you all. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter 4. As our children are dismissed to Children's Church. I hope you are excited about Vacation Bible School starting tonight. Yay! I know you are. They're not paying a bit of attention to me. <laughs> well, Galatians chapter 4 today, in verses 4 through 7, talk about what's missing, I truly believe, in this world and also in the church today. What's missing is of ultimate importance to God and to us as his followers. Let's read about what this may be in Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the time set had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Lord, teach us by the help of your Holy Spirit about what we might be missing out. And if we have it, call us deeper still that we may plumb the depths of the fullness of why we are here and redeemed by your precious blood. Dear Father, teach us now. We have one teacher, one teacher, the precious Holy Spirit. May you take this word and speak to everyone's heart like only you can. We've come to hear a word from heaven. A word from God. We are desperate, Lord, to hear from you today. Speak to us. We open our heart to you and your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Most Christians are not enjoying the fullness of life because they are not aware of the ultimate goal of their redemption and the deep meaning of their existence. Unaware of it. And so we want to plumb the depths of that and drill down to the core of what it's all about. We can really miss out on that and still be saved. While forgiveness of our sins through the cross of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our redemption, it is not the ultimate goal of life. It is the pathway to life. It is the pathway to something. Take a look at the Galatian passage that we just read about together on the screen. In Galatians chapter 4, well, I'll put it back since some of you um, may have looked at it up there. Take a look at verse 5. It says that the Lord came, verse 4, to redeem those under the law that we might, you see, the redemption took place so that we might receive the ultimate goal, and that is adopted as the children of God himself. That is the deepest need of everyone's heart, is this that we were created for God himself. We were created as daughters and sons of God himself. That's why we were created. And so he gave us this as a gift. We lost it in sin, but redeemed through Christ, 
to bring us back to the ultimate goal and deepest meaning of our life is come home to the Father. He wants us to come home. Through Christ is the way we come home. And he wants you to to let him be your father. The first thing that Jesus said when he was raised from the dead is what? What did he say? Resurrection appearance? Fire away. Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, was there. She heard it. And she's... And the first thing Jesus said is this, don't touch me, right? (laughs) Don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended where? To my God, your God. My Father, your Father. (laughs) Hallelujah. That was the game changer. Why? Because the payment had been made The way was open, and now Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, can be adopted as a child of her father in heaven, the father of her dreams. This is the great goal of all of life. Let me put it this way. Jesus is praying for his disciples. You've probably memorized some of that prayer, haven't you? You you. You know, probably John 17, 3, in that prayer, Jesus is praying, and he says, and this is eternal life, (laughs) that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is life. This is eternal life. This is abundant life, is coming home to the Father, and getting to know how good He is, how enjoying Him forever, and then glorifying His holy name through what He's given you to do. Let's read the story about this that Jesus told. And it's a story, it's a parable. When the parable, when the prodigal son came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare And here I am starving to death. Folks, I believe this. We live in an empty world and people are searching for answers far and wide. Searching, striving, trying to find the answer just like the prodigal was. He took all of the inheritance, half the inheritance um, that his father gave him and went out and squandered it on wild living. Prostitutes and drinking, parties. Everybody loved him when he had money, right? But when that ran out, where did he end up? He ended up in the pig pen. And that's when we come to our senses. And know this, folks, I've been searching far wide, and the answer is right in front of me, knocking on the door of my heart. He's been wanting me ever since he created me to come to him, but he won't make me. But he'll woo me. He'll draw me. And that's what he's doing to this prodigal. This prodigal says this. He says, I'll set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy. Isn't that the case? Took half of what his father worked hard for. And all the teaching that he gave him and instruction he gave him, rejected that, took that, and went off and squandered it. I'm no longer worthy. Can I get an amen there? We've all done that. We all, like sheep, have all gone astray. Each of us has turned to what? Our own way. That's the ultimate rebellion. It's just your own way. Whatever that way that is, it really doesn't matter. But your own way, that's the ultimate rebellion. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, when I became a Christian, that was me. I came home, but my head was so soaked and so low, I never did see the Father come running toward me. I never looked up. I had one thing on my mind. I knew he'd save me. I knew Jesus died for me. I knew he'd take me to heaven when I died. And I came back to God, and I was saved and set up camp in the servants' quarters. Felt comfortable there with you, Dale. Felt comfortable there. 
in the servants' quarters as a hired person. I love serving the Lord. I enjoyed getting out there like a servant, serving him. But you see, in Galatians 4, we just talked about you are no longer a what? No longer a slave. And I heard a caller, a calling come on me, a higher calling. It came over the wind and said, Jake, it's now time for you to come up to my house and live with me. You see, so he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. You see, what's that? That is a love that's like no other. And until you know that kind of intimacy in your heart with the strength of the Father, the gentleness and kindness, the power and the glory, then you have not been touched by this embrace. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father <laughs> said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, sandals on his wheat. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate and they're still celebrating in heaven over one sinner that repents and turns to Jesus and that pathway leads them to the Father's embrace. Oh, how he loves you and me. Now, you'd think that this son coming back home would look up and see his father. But what do you think this son was thinking his father would look like? Be on his face. Right? Condescending look. Like, okay, I told you so. You think he'd give him the cold shoulder for a while to teach him a lesson? No, that's all us, right? And that's all religion. That's all religion, too. Religion says what you need to do to make yourself right with God. Christianity has news to proclaim that's already happened. Jesus came and did that work on our behalf that through him we might have the gift of God's amazing grace that lifts up a poor sinner and embraces him completely without reservation. That's our God and King, and that is amazing grace. But I couldn't go there for the longest time. I can even remember Years ago in Kentucky, preaching about that, and this is the way I did it. I took a table. I set it up on the podium. I put three chairs there around that table, and I said this. You know, for all of you all who are saved and still living in the servants' quarters, God has a better place for you, and he has it prepared for you, and I put out a fourth chair at the table that he wants you to come sit in is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then a place for you. The Bible says we have been seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And so God wants you to come into that, and, and I couldn't do it. Why couldn't I do it? It's not because I didn't know about it, because I was teaching it just as laser clear as you could teach it. I couldn't make the transaction in my heart because my head hadn't been lifted. When I came home to God, I came home with my head down. No longer worthy, and I knew with everything about me, that I did not belong at that table. You know who we're sitting with? We're sitting with the creator of the universe who I rebelled against, who I used his name in vain, how I treated my blessed mother, 
I didn't follow God's rules. I don't belong there. And God was calling me there and wooing me to come take my place. I really don't know when it was for me that the transaction happened in my heart. It may have been even as late as when the death of my mother was happening over those two years and I walked with her. And God opened the recesses of my heart that hadn't been opened in years and years and years to serve and love my mother and my mother to love me. We'd never been hugged. First time I hugged my mother was I was 20 years old that I remember hugging my mother. I was 20 years old. I'd just gotten saved. I knew they did it at church, and I knew I needed to do it with my mother. I came up to hug my mother, and she did not hug me back. But in about a decade, she started hugging me back. After about 10 years of hugging my mother every time I saw her, she started giving me a little bit back there. That was good. But you see what I mean there? You and I were made for kisses and hugs or it wouldn't be in the Bible. You and I are made for intimacy with God is what we're talking about. And so our parents are to be a reflection of God in that. And, and we're just wounded. We're not a great reflection. Can I get an amen on that one out there? But don't let that hold you back. My mother and I, we got close. I'm going to tell you by God's amazing grace, we got close. And we couldn't have gotten any closer. I kissed her. I kissed her on her cheek and told her she's the best mother that I In the whole wide world. And I meant it with all of my heart. Dana, you remember. And oh, we had such good prayers and everything. I truly, I believe that opened up something in my heart that had been missing all along. Something that God is going to use one way or the other. I've seen him use it with grandfathers. Crusted over hearts. Have, here comes those grandchildren, hallelujah. And God takes the arrow of Cupid's love and <laughs> fires it through, right through those grandkids and into that heart. And the kids go, I wish my mom and dad would have treated us that good when I was coming up. Look how they treat those grandkids. Can you believe it? Whew. I wish they'd have done that for me. <laughs> no. Well, They had other things on their mind when they had you. But right now, uh, God used those grandkids to open up that heart. Whatever he uses, that's where the embrace and the kiss and the hug. We were created for intimacy with God Almighty and only he and he alone. You can search for love all over and not find it Truly, for the depth of your soul, like Jesus. Don't put that on your husband and wife. They can't live up to God. They can't live up to that. They'll be a reflection of him. Amen. We grow into that. But they just can't feel the deepest need of your heart till they meet their heavenly fathers, his embrace, his touch. He's a good, good father, and there's nobody as powerful as him to bring the goods that our soul was made for and longs for and searches for until we find Jesus and the pathway that leads back home to God. This is what they were celebrating. First of all, it means being adopted. We see here in Galatians chapter 4, verse 7, it says that you are no longer a slave but God's child. Verse 5 says that you might receive adoption to sonship. Now, I looked it up. When a Roman was adopted into a family's household, here's how radical it was. I mean, all legal documents and everything in their former way of life was gone. And everything was made new. And they had full rights and privileges as a son or, in our case, daughter of that father full privileges i mean that's a lot so 
Jesus, the Son, brought us adoption as a child of the Father. Adopted. We also are an heir, and verse 7 says that we become an heir. <laughs> so we're not some poverty-stricken child. We are before we come to the Father. But now we're an heir to the promises and everything God owns. But not just adopted, folks, because we've been born again. We've been born from above with God's seed. Why? Because God's children are holy like him. And so we are not holy. And so what God knew that we were completely deficient in, he sent forth his spirit into our hearts and quickened our dead spirit to life. We were united with Christ in God and that is now who we are. We share his likeness. We share in his DNA because God has quickened us to life by his spirit. This is the awesome calling of every believer in Jesus. We sharing in his DNA. That is awesome. If it's not just words on a chalkboard for you. And we'll get to that in a minute. It was words on a chalkboard to me until I came into the fullness of what God had redeemed me for. So every believer has become a new creation. The old has passed away. And behold, all things have become new. If anybody is in Jesus, we're in Christ our life is hidden with Christ in God. And so, abandon yourself and live in this new creation in Christ Jesus to the fullness as a child of God. This is who we are. So, it's not just adopted. You share in his nature and a likeness, and this is pretty sweet. Now, two blessings to accept and experience as a child. <clears throat> Number one, it's where you belong. In fact, it's who you belong to. You belong to God. You are His. And so just allow yourself to be taken up with that, that I belong to someone who is the lover of my soul. He's my father. I'm God's own possession. Accept him as your father and let him father you. That's what we're getting to. Let him father you. Guys, we don't grow out of the need to be fathered by our father. Just because we grow up and get a driver's license and can go to Walmart and buy groceries doesn't mean you live independently of your father in heaven. We all have a deep need to daily be fathered. And so we're all children. In fact, unless you're converted... Big Daddy, and become like a child, you can't even enter into this realm of God, you see. And so God wants to be our Father, and He wants to be the verb of that. He wants to Father you. So let Him be your Father. <laughs> Take possession of your new identity. Your new identity is I am a dearly loved child of my father. That's who you are. Accept that deeply and you will be at peace forevermore. There'll be a peace that comes upon you. You no longer have to prove yourself worthy. Don't have to have prove yourself like to who? Doing what? For who? You won't, have to, you won't have to prove yourself to men or people. Why? Because you have got this beaming face shining on you just as you are. This is 
the love and acceptance of your heavenly Father. You don't have to prove yourself anymore. The striving, let it be over. That's for religion. That's not for this relationship that's based on grace. <laughs> you are dearly loved, sweet, sweet, sweet love. Dear to the heart of God. How dear he would give his only begotten son so that you might become his dearly loved son or daughter in his family. That's how dearly loved you are. See what great love the Father has lavished. You see that word lavished? I mean, it can't get any bigger than that. Lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And then he didn't stop there. And he says, and that's what we are. This is who you are. Drill it down. Accept it into the core of who you are. And your search will be over this is you remember the song that says i once was lost but now i'm found you come into where you belong whose you are accepted completely <laughs> this is it so pray the abba prayer if you prayed the abba prayer the Abba prayer is deep within you. Hallelujah. Russ, the hardest and gladdest thing you can ever do in life is with the fullness of heart look toward God in heaven and cry, Father, 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 like a child, Father. It's the Abba prayer. The Abba prayer goes like this. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, by who? By him, by who? By the Holy Spirit. You see what the Holy Spirit cries out? Deep within you is what the Holy Spirit has been crying out for in eternity. Because just like God the Father is the Father of Jesus, and every time he uttered a prayer, he said, Father, except one time. And that is on the cross when he was bearing our hell, our sin, the punishment that brought us peace. That's when, that's when he said, My God, because there was such distance there. Otherwise, he was saying, Father, why there's such intimacy and closeness that they have enjoyed for an eternity. That's why we say love is eternal. We're the only ones that can say love is eternal. Wherever that comes from, that comes from us. Because God has eternally existed in a love relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for eternity. And he's called us into that and share in that. It is the center of existence. It is reality. This is our reality. And so, therefore, we have such a privilege to, by the Holy Spirit, cry out, Father. Our Father is God. <laughs> our Father is God. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children the testimony of the Holy Spirit within our hearts. It's true. It's who you are. It's who you are. Hallelujah. I don't know when the transaction happened in me. It was somewhere with my mama. But I'm going to tell you, it, it has been overwhelmingly good. But I can tell you this too. I knew that I hadn't arrived at that, but it was God was calling me that when I set that table up in Kentucky and told people, God wants, to come, wants you to come to the table. But I just couldn't accept it. Why? Because I knew where I'd been and what I'd done. <clears throat> In Kentucky, I said, Lord, I'll serve you the rest of my days. You've been so good to me. Thank you for bringing me back. I still had that servant, slave mentality. Now, children are to be God's servants too, but we're children first. I just couldn't do it. 
You know, I couldn't make myself do it. Why? Because with every fiber of my being, I knew I didn't belong at that table. And you can't do what you don't believe in. I couldn't. I don't know when the transaction had to happen for me. I was preaching this at 8.30, and I looked out, and right there was Laura Huber, and I said, but I know when it was for you. And she said, yeah, it's when God called me to missionary in Uganda. I remember that just as plain as day. God called her to go to Uganda, and she said, who am I? You want me to go? I don't know what to do over there. I don't know what to do as a missionary. This was going to be for two weeks. God made it plain, plain as the nose on her face. I want you to go. And when she accepted that for the first time in her life, she'd been a Christian a long time, she accepted God's love for her. That transaction was made in her heart. And it lifted her up, and I said, you're forevermore will be changed. There is no going back after that. There's no going back. Why? What would you go back to? Nothing better than that. It's the hardest, gladdest thing you'll ever do. I pray that you do it today. If it if you can, if you can just allow yourself. Precious Jesus has washed away all your sins. He's washed away all your sins. And your heavenly Father says, I will remember them no more. In my relationship with you, it'll never come up. <laughs> Somebody may say, what about my judgment day? Friend, right there is your judgment day. On that old rugged cross, there was one in your stead that was judged on your behalf, and he paid your penalty. And that's why he cried, cried out. It was a suffering of his soul that was such a suffering. So that, so that you could become God's children. And so let that, let that grace, let that wooing, let that lift your head. Look up. Look up and see the face of your father. Your face of your father is not disappointed or angry at you. The face of your father is the face that's, that faced the prodigal son. And he was so pleased to see him again. We had an invitation at 8.30, and I, I told people, I said, I realize many people in this room didn't get your Father's blessing, and you're having a harder time with this. I said, it's okay, because God is able, and he will show you that every person falls short of giving the, his kind of love. Come and let him show you who he is, straight, straight, and direct. But... If you didn't get the blessing of your earthly father, there is a blessing in the Bible called the Aaronic Blessing, and it goes something like this. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. Uh, And be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And his countenance is a countenance that's very pleased with you for one reason he sees you coming home. So, with a whole heart, Turn yourself toward God through Jesus Christ our Lord and come home to the one who truly loves you like nobody can is your 
Heavenly Father, and let His powerful blessing come out upon you. And it will when you see His sweet, shining, powerful, almighty, glorious, beautiful face shining on you, shining on you. That's what that prodigal saw running to meet him. And let your spirit cry out to him then, Abba, Father, and you will be brought deep. There's four ways God's children are to be fathered by God. Remember, that's a verb. So how are we to be fathered by God? Number one, he's there to teach us. (laughs) He's, He's going to teach you. He's an awesome teacher. Every father is to teach their children, to be taught by your father. That's foundational. He'll teach you. In Isaiah, it says, all your children will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their what? Great will be their peace. That's why Jesus says, don't call any man father or master on earth, for you've got one. Let him teach you. Oh, he'll show you things. <laughs> He'll show you things you never would have known through any other teacher. (laughs) The wonderful things. And then imitate your father. Imitate him. Let him father you by being there and you imitate him. Somebody may say, we can't see the father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Imitate the father. Therefore, be imitators of God As dearly loved what? Dearly loved children. It's who you are. And so what do we do? We do what our dad does. We look at him and see what he's doing, and we do what he does. Let him father us. Let him be your father. Do what he does. Practice his virtues. There are two I want to highlight here. One is his self-giving love for the cross. He gave his life for you to fill your cup to overflow to be a blessing like that like himself to others be christ to other people love people the way the father loves the world self-giving love poured out and then fidelity he was faithful to his father fidelity faithfulness virtues practice his virtues then work with your father How many of you used to love to go out with your dad and do what he was doing? Yes, it's part of that. They're that template, see. What did you all do? I mean, what did you do? You know, my dad, he was not a mechanic. I couldn't go work on anything with him. He never did work on anything. But I used to love to go to his office. And you know what he allowed me to do is type on an old typewriter like I was working like he, you know, his uh, people working in his office. And then I'd get to go to the copy machine. Back in 1972, a copy machine was a big technological item. It looked like just like the one we're using in there. I'm going to tell you, they haven't changed in a while. And I would put stuff on that copy machine. He'd let me copy it. I used to love to go with my dad to his office. Work with your father let's put it this way jesus gave them this answer barely barely i say unto you the son can do nothing by himself guys can we say that who is saying it here jesus you know what he said he says the son can do nothing by himself Let God father you like he did his son Jesus. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these so that you will be amazed. You will be amazed too as your father. So go throughout your day. Some people separate the sacred from the secular, folks. Don't compartmentalize God out of your life. He wants to father you wherever you are. 
recreation, work, church, your devotional. He, we're, we're doing life together. Wherever he's called you to be, you can mark this down. There will be divine action going on wherever you are supposed to be. And so God is at work there before you even get there. And so let, let him teach you. Let him show you. Let, join him in his work. That's what it is. Um, he'll show you some amazing things. You'll be just blessed. Join God in what he's doing all around you. Wherever you're supposed to be, God's at work all the time. I'm talking, I'm saying all the time because back here it's all the time. The son does nothing. He can do nothing by himself. He does, he's being fathered by his father in heaven and showing us the way. Whew, that is such a special relationship. <clears throat> Dan bought somebody something not too long ago and the somebody didn't want her to pay for it and just out of her mouth came this thought or into her head came this thought thought oh my father's got it is that what you came to you what something like that it was a big bill she's the payer of our bills uh at our home and has been for 30 years i tried for the first six months of our marriage but there's a big bill that came and the thought came to your mind. Yeah, it increased and it's increased. My dad pays for all my stuff. Amen. Our father did that when we were in his house. Is that right? And our father in heaven wants to father us and wants us to know where he's called, he'll provide. He will provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory, the riches in Christ Jesus in glory. And so that's part of that teachings is the work of God. You'll be amazed. Here, let me give you this verse. This is really going with me. And I'll stop when the band comes up. band's coming up in 58 at 1158. That's when they come out, 58 minutes after we start. Let me tell you a verse. You're going to like this verse. How many of you fathers, if his son would come and ask you for a piece of bread, would give him a stone? And if he comes up and asks you for a fish, how many of you would just give him a snake too? How many of you would give him a snake? No one, uh, no one of you. And then Jesus says, so if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? God wants to father you. I don't want to leave any of those precious gifts on the table with God around. Let's ask for things that we know we need in doing God's will, fulfilling his purpose, whatever that may be, let God show himself to you. And so, yes, my father will pay for that. And he does. Join God in what he's doing around you and share in your father's glory. I love this. Take a look at this verse. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory. Glory starts now. You can see the glory of your Father in the face of Jesus who is in your heart. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Now, I realize all of us suffer in this world but here's the promise god will redeem your suffering and through that show himself to you refine your faith and like a potter with the clay he'll mold you into his image through faith and hope and love that's found in jesus god will redeem your suffering and he will not waste it 
He will not waste it. Cry out to him like a child, and that will draw down the consolations of your father like nothing else. I'm going to tell you that. The blessings uh, of tears. And so, <clears throat> let's read about that. As we continue on, there's a glorious future for all of us. And what, does, what is that glorious future? Well, let me read about it in Revelation. It's the last chapter of the Bible. And it says this. Remember, this is ultimate. This is who you are and what you're made for. It says in verse 3, No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face. And his name will be on their foreheads. It's who you are. He knows you better than you know himself. You know yourself. He created you and redeemed you to be his dearly loved child. Well, we come to the invitation. Is there a prodigal in this room today? Is there a prodigal here? who says this, I've wandered far from God and God has spoken to my heart today and I want to come home, come home to my Father through Jesus Christ, His Son. I leave my sins, sinful lifestyle, I let it go and I come to Jesus, save me, Lord. And through Christ, I want to come to know my Father in heaven. Is there a prodigal here today who would be saved through this invitation? I want you to come. I'll be standing here. You can say, Pastor, I know you were there one day, and I've come, and I ask you, pray with me. I'm ready to make the decision. I'll be right here. But you'll also see through your eyes of faith the Father's face. He loves you. He's not angry with you. He wants you to come home. And then if there's any Christian here today who needs to go from the servant quarters to the Lord's house, be seated at that table. His grace is calling you. That's undeserved favor. You've got his favor. Now come. Believe in grace. And let God's grace lift you up. Let that transaction be made in your heart and mind today. Lord, in this song, we turn this invitation over to you. And I pray that you would use it, dear Lord. Lord, over us is, a, is our Heavenly Father who wants to be our Father and to Father us, I pray that you would show us in this invitation the step of obedience we're to take to come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Redemption 
Pastor Jake for sharing uh, at this service as I was listening through one of the things I thought about some of you you have to date yourself a little bit do you remember when you used to call on Sunday you used to call your parents I we did called because it was cheaper now with cell phones and stuff nobody thinks about that but calling your dad on Sunday uh, always look forward to those weekends to call my mom or my dad to be able to make that connection when we lived out of state uh, what a blessing that was and so as you think about the Lord, and here we are on Sunday, and the message being brought, take some time. Hang out with your spiritual dad. 
See what he's got for you this day. Uh, if you need to sh chat with one of the staff members, feel free. We're more than willing to be hanging out here later and talking to you. Uh, if you've got a spiritual concern or you're wanting to walk close to the Lord, we'd love to have an opportunity to talk to you. Up on the screen is a QR code. If you've got your phone, you can use that, and you can scan it with a, uh, scan, a QR scanner. Uh, it'll send you to a link. If you happen to be a guest with us today, we'd love for you to do that, and we'll get you some information then about the church. There's also a connection card in the back of the pew. If you'd rather do it the old-fashioned way of paper, that's perfectly fine, and there's boxes at each of the exits on to your right as you go out you could drop those connection cards in we're glad you're with us today and would love to for you to respond in one of those two ways to us to let us know that you were here uh, this past week the teenagers were on a missions week we were still here and going out but we went to three different locations uh, on Monday, we went to the Friendship House here in Roanoke, and we painted decking, uh, the deck and then some decking around the playground equipment was what we did. Very, very hot day. I was totally worn out that day. Uh, then Tuesday, we went to God's Pit Crew and there, took a tour around there, but then made children's uh, buckets, disaster relief buckets for the kids. They started doing that a few years ago to let children who've been in a disaster have some things that they could have, a coloring book, some crayons, a stuffed animal. And so that was a blessing. And then Thursday, we drove down to Bland, the Bland Community Center. And there we cleaned some buildings and threw out some stuff that needed to be thrown out to make room for school supplies. Uh, we ended up working in their, their store and their clothing area and cleaning up and doing some things in that way. And then we also packed a, a bunch of food bags to be able to be given out. So that's what we did this past week with our young people, the ones that were there. We were totally blessed. And we thank you as a church uh, because it's your support that allows us to be able to do that and to be able to reach out in that way. So thank you very, very much. Fusion Camp is just around the corner, and it's still not too late. You can see me. I can still get you in if you decide, if you're a young person, uh, finished in the 6th through 12th grade, would love to have you go and be a part of our camp this summer. Uh, and so let, come see me, and I can get you some information on that. Then VBS starts tonight. So VBS starts at 6 o'clock, goes to 8.15, four-year-olds up through 5th grade. Uh, I would love to see lots of little kids here. If you want to come and you're an adult, there's two ways for you to come as an adult. Number one, you can see Miss Mary Beth and say, can I volunteer? You got a place for me? And then number two, you can come to Pastor Jake's adult VBS uh, tonight also. That's in the Haddock classroom. Uh, that's room 108 back in the back hallway over here. And Jake will be teaching adults there. But this is going to be a busy week here at the church. You can tell when you come in, it looks different out there by no means, you know, it's like an up here, totally different. But that's the excitement of EBS, just being able to gather and change the church and, and then get into God's Word and, and with excitement. And so uh, it, we'd love to see you be here and be a part of that. And if you can't do either one of those, please pray for us this week for VBS as we kind of go through this time with our kids and pointing them to Jesus and letting them know how much Jesus loves them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close. God, we thank you for this day. We just ask now that you would just help us, Lord, uh, to walk with you, to, to pause uh, because you are Father. As we sang, good, good Father, as we listen from your word about the fact that you've adopted us, Lord, just help us to cherish that. Help us to catch that reality. God, help us to, to, to grow in that fellowship and connection with you as our Father. And Lord, for someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, haven't been adopted into your family yet, Lord, give them the courage to grab uh, a staff member or a deacon this, even before they leave to make that right. And then if there's someone who's drifted away that finds themselves in the prodigal fashion, Lord, that they would come back to you. Continue to prompt their heart. You are a loving, caring Father. Now, as we go, as we go out, Lord, help us to love and care for people as you have loved and cared for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.
Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go. 